Hey guys, it's Josh from UncleLearningsTackle.com. Uh, today we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite baits to fish, um, just absolutely deadly. Uh, these baits can pretty much be the difference between having a really crappy fishing trip and uh, making your whole week. So, you know, what am I talking about? Well, of course, I'm talking about the Great White Tube Jig. Um, so we're going to make them in a couple different varieties. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to kind of share share with you my tube jig journey. So here we go. This is actually what I started with a couple days ago. I call this uh, I call this the toad, which rhymes with what it actually looks like, but it's a pretty pathetic attempt for a tube jig. Um, but these things uh, these things take time, and with a little bit of practice, I think just a couple of days uh, later, I ended up having some really nice results on um, a couple of you know larger tube jigs for lake trout and you know a couple of these like three inch jobbies for uh, drop shotting like cutthroats or tiger trout or brooks or browns um, that's that's kind of how I like to fish these in the late fall actually you know pretty much spring ice off right around the corner as well um, so let's get into how we make them uh, first thing you're going to need surprise surprise 3d printed rods um, so I got them here in a couple of different varieties. Uh, you can see that one of the layers shifted over on me, but I mean this thing, it's, it's pretty big, so, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I usually don't blush. So yeah, you know, when you, when you have that much height to it, you know, basically you're gonna, you're gonna end up with a little bit of, uh, you know, basically just layer, layer problems, but guess what? It doesn't matter because you're gonna be coating it and coating on top of it. Uh, if you've never shot tube jigs before, um, you can kind of think of this as, you know, basically you can think of it as if you're going to take this and like dip it in a bowl of honey and then the name of the game is that, you know, that's going to be kind of the viscosity of, uh, the plastisol when it's heated up. And so you don't want it to run all the way down to the top. You don't want it to run all the way down to the bottom. So, you know, it's going to go in, you can pull it out real slow and then I kind of like to twirl it and kind of bring it up like that and make sure you get a nice even pour. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's going to be the name of the game. So what are we going to need to do this? Uh, and actually, you know, like I was saying, honey, it's such a great analog that if you want to go out and practice, I mean, go buy a couple bottles of honey or whatever and just put them in a vase, vase, vase. And um, yeah, just try it out and say, you know, you know, that way, you know, practice like you play and that, you know, you don't have to waste any of your nice virgin plastazol to get this done. So what are we going to need? Boom, you need your dipping rods. We have two of them here. These are both printed in ABS. Um, it's just uh, it's what I like to print in. And then what else are we gonna need? You're gonna need this really, you know, a vase or something to dip it in. I've seen people dip it in the Pyrex before, uh, Pyrex pot. That's gonna work just fine. It's not gonna work just fine for our big old lake trout jigs. Um, you're going to need a water cup, and I'll get into this a little bit later. But yeah, water cup filled with ice, and of course you're gonna need your uh, you're gonna need your Last is all, I'm just going to use white remnants because I've been shooting it all week. Um, I'll probably actually grab just a little bit more. Um, um, and then you're going to need uh, your dye. Basically, what I've done here is I've taken, I've taken oil, oil-based dyes, which are linseed oil-based. And so I will take those, and then um, what I do is I'll actually just use more linseed to stretch that out a little bit and mix it with my plastazol. And when you look at the, uh, the smoke point of linseed oil, it's about 450 degrees. We're only trying to get the plastisol to 350, and uh, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead, I'll get my plastisol heated. Oh, last thing, sorry. You're going to need your cutter. Um, so yeah, make sure you have your tail cutter all set up, and that's it. Okay guys, so plastisol is melted. I'm going to throw on my uh, mask real quick, <clears throat> pour it into here, and we'll get going. All right.
this one turned out pretty good, but as you'll see, um, you know, you're working with water and you're working with plastizol here. It's not exactly, you know, these are not, that one turned out really nice, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just be smart, right? So unfortunately, it looks like maybe this glove is, is busted up a little bit, and so it kept getting into my dips when I was trying to, uh, when I was trying to dip them. But uh, yeah, you can see, even I get impatient, I try and pat off all the water, but um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't, yeah, sometimes I'm just not real smart about it. And uh, so yeah, that's, then you're gonna get spitting, but man, wow, really nice. Uh, these just look like phalluses, I can't even lie. But yeah, super nice. Uh, we'll probably cut that one right about there. Nice seven inch tube jig, we'll have this one right about the same thing. Um, and they come off these molds really pretty well once they're once they're nice and cooled. Um, maybe they do. Yeah, they do. They slide right off. Uh, it's funny. My wife's always making fun of me. She's like, "What the heck are you working on?" But you guys get it. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, so you're probably thinking, "Okay, cool, Josh. Great tubes. Uh, how are we gonna cut them?" Um, so we're gonna cut them this way, uh, just with these. So these are just Fisker. I think they're they're not Fisker. They're not that nice. Fisker is like the on brand, but I was like, ah, I think they wanted something like forty dollars for fifteen. No, Amazon, fifty of them. Uh, I think I paid thirty bucks shipped. So, anyways, that you go to Lowe's. I think I I'd be lying if I told you what washers these were. Just experiment. I bought two washers in between each one, and then all you got to do is you just have to uh, you know find out where you want it to slide, push it all the way down, and then rotate it back. And there you go, too jigglicious. And then, yeah, of course you'll have to go through and work on these incomplete ones. Uh, but yeah, there you go, tube jig. Eat me, Mr. Lake Trout. Don't mind if I do, Josh. <laughs> um, so yeah, now it's just you know a matter of getting all your tubes sliced and diced. And oh yeah, but be careful, by the way. These things are friggin' sharp, and it is an ocean nightmare um, with these things. That tail's not long enough. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, that's pretty much it. Let's see if we can get like a nice, perfect looking one. I really like the one that I've left down in there. Let me see if I can fish it out real quick. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So there's that one. Nice long slice on it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm looking for. Ooh, that is pretty good. It's a little stiffer than it should be because it just came out of that nice cold water, but boy, oh boy, there you have it. White tube jigs, uh, dip, dip molded on a 3D printed rod, looking, looking pretty good. So, very excited. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Well, all right, there you have it. My favorite bait, the white tube jig, built off of a 3D printed rod. I guess we really do live in the future. Well, I just wanted to go over a couple of tips and tricks, um, you know, just kind of some lessons learned, I guess, that I've had as I was making these over the past week. Very first thing you need to know, slow and steady. So slow in, slow out. Like I said, you're going to kind of get it running, and then you're going to, like, twist it a little bit to wrap that around, turn it all the way up, and let it flow. Um, the second thing, you can notice, you know, I, I didn't really keep my wits about me, and I had a, a wet rod or it was wet plastic. I think it was on the second one. And I went straight back into the plastizol, and you could hear it kind of spitting and hissing. Now, if this ends up happening to you, you know, just keep your wits about you. You're probably wearing your PPE, and you're going to be fine. So, you know, just keep it in there. It'll stop spitting and hissing, and then you can kind of slowly start bringing it up. That's, you know, kind of what I recommend. Um, and, you know, in the end, basically what you're going to end up with, if you weren't smart enough to dry it all the way, is a little pinhole just like that you know and I guess that's just my burden that I'm gonna have to live with so oh well anyways second thing that I want to talk about is when you get it right out of there on your rod it's gonna be warm and impressionable make sure you're cognizant of where the bottom of that cooling cup is gonna be because if you go and you just ram it all the way in you're gonna end up getting like blunt edges or you know something like that if I had to say you'll probably get something just like that almost as if I've done it before but anyways that's really all I got to say. Um, if you have any questions about what we did here, we're going to go ahead and put up all the materials, material checklist on the website so you can do this at home for yourself. Uh, if you have any questions, drop us a line at UncleArnie'sTackle.com 
As always, I'm Josh with Uncle Arnie's Tackle, and we'll see you next time.